Hi, my name is Ane and I'm a stylist at Epic Armory here at Iron Fortress in Copenhagen. Um, in a not so distant future, we're gonna launch a series of weapons called Battle Worn. Um, and for that, we're gonna make a photo shoot. And we have to build a character who can play the star in this photo shoot. And of course, he's gonna need an entire outfit. He's gonna be a battle worn mercenary. And um, that's why I'm here in the workshop today with uh, Fabian, our metalworks designer. <laughs> And Fabian, could you, could you tell me what we're you going to do today? Well, today we're going to work on a chainmail, and I'll go through a few steps where I'll show you how I clean it, how I rough it up a bit, and in the end I'm going to like tell you a bit how you can rush it up if that is what you want. And that's that's the plan for today. Cool. To make something uh, a bit like this, but maybe not as rough. Sounds exciting. I'm going to go do some. Cool. I'll get to it then. We're here to rough up a chainmail to get a nice battle-worn look on it. And uh, well, so let's start from the beginning. First, we need to get our hands on the chainmail. And uh, by luck, I found a chainmail right over here. And uh, in this case, this is um, our Ragnar chainmail from our product line. Um, we believe it would do a nice fit because it has short sleeves. And that would go well with the character we have in uh, design we have, have in mind. So first we're going to unpack this bastard, <laughs> get rid of all the cardboard, we don't need that. And um, get a good look of what do we have here. Um, one of the things I noticed is it's very oily and that is simply to protect it from rust and stuff like that. What we're going to do now is we're going to remove the oil um, and rust it up. And um, in doing so, we will also be ruining the... the product warranty. So you should be aware of this. If you start messing with your products like this, the warranty will go off. Um, but uh, let's do it anyways. So now we are here at my cleaning table where we are gonna clean the chain mill. Um, be, no, be aware that when you clean this from oil, uh, it will probably be very messy because the oil has to go somewhere. There are several ways to clean it. Uh, I like to use the one where I uh, get some brake cleaner, lovely brand here, um, and then I kind of just spray it all away and let it dry out for a bit. It's very efficient, it's very easy to use, but there of course are some disadvantages to it. One of them is the fumes from all the, the solvents and stuff, so I recommend having some suction or doing it outside. Um, you can also do it in like uh, soap water and just wash the whole chain mill. Um, that is also an option. So do it like a, a nice, good soap. This is the kind of dishwashing soap you use. It's very, very efficient for that. And just dump it down there and like kind of scrub it if you can and hang it for drying. Um, be aware when you hang it for drying, do it in a somewhat dry space, not too, you know, if the air moisture is too high, it actually just might ca catch rust from that. So be aware of that. Um, one of the advantages with this one is I can um, kind of easily clean it in uh, the desired spots if I don't want everything to be rusted, but just specific areas, uh, which is the case this time. So um, let's get started. First, we're just gonna spread it out because if it's in a lump, then the oil will just kind of gather inside. So you kind of want to spread it out as much as possible. Um, and then just take it step by step. Here we are, have a good piece. Um, this case, I kind of want it to rust here around the, the neckline. I want it to rust under the arms because sometimes when you fight a lot, you sweat a lot and people sweat under their arms for some reason. So that's a good place to have rust. Around the edges here as well. And in the bottom line is the plan. So now we're just shaking good. Shake it like you mean it. Do a dance or something, I don't know. And then you just turn on the suction and it will get noisy now. And then, boom. And here I'm doing it in the bottom. So when we start cutting and disassembling, like the tips will get uh, rusty because if there's still oil on it, it will not rust. But I'm keeping uh, this area here still well oiled because, well, we don't want all of it to rust. It's only like slightly battle worn. It's not like we're not trying to make an undead armor here. So we, we're gonna be a bit careful where we put it so it's not overdone. 
because we're only going for battle-worn look, at least on this one. So we're just blowing all the places we imagine we are gonna want it to rust, because there's no need to waste cleaning materials on areas where you're not gonna work anyways, or where. And it's almost out. So what happened here was gonna like, we were <laughs> record why you should be careful with open fire around the brake cleaner. It's a very, um, it lights fire very fast. Um, as you can see here, it was just like a tiny flame. <laughs> so be aware when you use the brake cleaner, have no live fire around it. We are totally safe because I'm a professional. Now we're back here. We had the um, chain mail uh, clean the places we wanted to be clean. Now it's time to ravage it, so to say. There are several ways to open up the chain mail or disassemble it, if you will. And uh, one of them is with a set of pliers. It's very simple. You just, you know, take one plier, grab a ring, figure out where it's opened, and then you just twist them apart. Take the ring out, throw it in a pile, and then you just continue doing this until it looks nice or it looks like as you want it to, because there's not a right look for it. There's the look that you want, nothing else matters. Um, be careful not to overdo it, because well, suddenly you end up with like something closer to a bikini chainmail rather than <laughs> actually armor. So, you know, you don't want to overdo it as well. And finding the right balance can sometimes be a bit hard, but you know, practice makes perfect. And worst case scenario, you can put the rings back and close it up again. It's um, it's not the end of the world if you um, misplace a ring or two. As you can see here, we just went in. There's, it's not easy with these gloves on. <laughs> As you can see, the ring is uh, opened in one end, so you get a nice grip here and then you get a nice strip here, and then you just like twist them apart, so they're open like this, and doop, ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop. Then you can just kind of twist it out, and you have a free ring, and this one is split even more. And then you just continue doing that until it looks nice. And uh, these lovely snippety snaps, they, um, well, they snip and snap. Um, and it's very simple. You just take up the ring, and then you just start clipping into it and you can just like brush it away and it goes a lot faster but you're also ruining the rings every time you do it um, you will not be able to reuse the ring again uh, this version is nice because it's it's easy to get in and uh, just cut your way in where well, this one can be a bit more I mean it's not impossible but it's it's a bit more uh, have to work a bit more and also this one has yes and also this one has a leverage system so you have to use less force in using it so if you're not too strong or you just you know you don't want to waste your fingers too fast then I would definitely recommend one of these for the job because it just goes so much faster see now we just want to cut this one here because we don't just want holes up in we kind of just cut it in a crooked seam. It's getting nicely snippety. This one is getting short. Then you might want to leave this one longer, or maybe just cut it up shorter in the other side. Um, maybe just, you know, just like over here. And then already start working your way up to the next. And then it's almost like cutting fabric. Pay attention to when you cut the rings that they don't just fly everywhere because it it sucks to step on them, uh, to be honest. I've tried this a few times. I mean, it helps to have shoes on as well, but if you don't have shoes on, you're sitting in your room and suddenly, you, well, it hurts. So try to collect where all the up springs are, so to say. And then, you know, see they fly around a bit. So maybe safety goggles as always, a good idea. 
I mean, don't, don't be like me, be better than me. <laughs> um, and then you just continue the whole way around until you end up with like, okay, now I have a nice edge. And then you might want to have some torn pieces uh, in the middle. And then you again, spread it out a bit just to get a good overview. Okay, what do I have to work with? Where would it be nice? Where does it seem nice? I mean, I can only recommend just looking at pictures of battle-worn things just to get ins inspired at least. And say, okay, I want like a tiny hole over here. Then you just dig in. And of course it helps to put your hand under here. And then you can kind of just, you know, work your way around, cutting ring by ring until you're happy with a result. So now we have a nice hole, but instead of just cutting a, a clean hole, you can see I kind of just cut an edge around to have this flop, because now when I put the chainmail on, this will kind of dangle down and look more like loose chains that have been cut or, or, you know, been, you know, damaged in a way instead of just having a hole. I mean, but you can of course have a hole if you want to have a hole. But this just looks nicer that it's like crumbling in in itself. It looks more battle damaged rather than pulled apart. It's small details like that, that in the end uh, actually makes a huge difference uh, on how epic it will look. And uh, yeah, this can take a while to do, but you know, Put on some good music, get into tunes, maybe put on an audiobook. I mean, and then just get snippet snapping. Um, So now we have picked the chainmail apart, we're ready to um, give it some nice rust um, to make it look even more worn and old. Uh, for that I've, uh, I use um, a mixture of salt water and uh, vinegar and it's, um, I take the salt, uh, well, <laughs> I take the water and then I dilute it with salt until the salt will dilute no longer. When the salt starts, you know, stopping to be dissolved, then it's a, then it's a very spit um, dilution, so to, solution, so to say. And then I just add like a squirt of uh, vinegar. Of course, if you add more vinegar, um, you will get a more aggressive solution. Uh, I like to be in control of it, so I actually go with semi-light solutions, uh, because then I can always say, okay, that's enough. N now I don't want any more. And then you just, you know, put it in one of these, and then you just spray it on top. And then you let it rest for a day or two, and over time, um, it will start to slowly rust out. This is a process that will take some time, so you should have patience with it. It's not gonna happen you know, instantly. Of course, if you use aggressive acids and stuff like that, it will go fast, but it's also harder to control and, and you know, stop the rusting effect again. Um, so I, I like to, you know, you know use um, weaker solutions because then I'm more in control of it. And uh, well, you kind of just hang it somewhere nice and uh, wait for it to, you know, catch rust. Um, if you live in a very dry or windy area or something like that, I'd recommend just go spray it maybe once, maybe twice a day, one in the morning, one in the evening, depending on how aggressive rust you want on it. And then you just keep doing that until you're happy with the result. And when you're done with that, you um, kind of just, you know, either oil it up again to halt the further uh, rusting of it and, you know, to protect, pr protect the rest of the chainmail. Um, as I mentioned earlier when I cleaned it, I haven't cleaned all the chainmail, only the edges, because I didn't want it to be like completely over rusted. I just wanted the edges to have some wear and tear uh, for this look we're going for in this um, mercenary character. Now, three days has passed since we last worked on the chainmail, and at that time we just sprayed a little with the solution of salt water and vinegar. And um, let's have a look how it looks now. I mean, I already know, but I'm going to show you. As you can see here, or if we start, there's a nice rusted effect in the bottom of it. 
Not too much, not all over the place, just, you know, around the edges, the most exposed places. Uh, so not much in here, because that would be touched a lot, but in the outer edges and sleeves and uh, around the neckline where you sweat a lot also. So you see, so we have a nice rust under the arms and in the armpits. Then we have some around the neck, but if you notice, I don't know how well you can see it, but most of the middle part is unrusted as it is right now. And that helps it become like, not like a total wasted chainmail, but you know, slightly used. It, I'd say, it's a, but depending on how rusted you want it, of course you can go like full crazy and go this uh, effect with it. That was a bit too much for the look we wanted to this uh, character. So we just like, I just sprayed it once when we put it down and then just let uh, time and weather dust do its thing. Some of the things you should be aware of though is temperature and humidity also affects how much and how little. So if you live in a uh, dry, uh, cold area, it will take forever for it to rust, but if it's a warm, hot uh, area, then it will go a lot faster. So it, it varies depending on, well, your humidity, your, your, your climate, uh, so to say. And um, well, I think this one is ready for battle now. 